As the sun began to set, casting a warm orange hue over our backyard, I couldn't help but reflect on the incredible journey Oliver and I had shared together for the past ten years. Our story was one of love, challenges, and above all, family. Our two daughters, Samantha and Rose, played in the yard, their laughter echoing in the air. Mom, look how high I can swing, Samantha shouted, her ponytail bobbing as she soared through the air. I smiled, watching her with pride. That's amazing, Sammy. Just be careful, Oliver walked over, a playful grin on his face. Remember when we were young and used to swing that high? I chuckled, remembering those carefree days. Yeah, and the world seemed so simple back then. He wrapped his arm around my shoulders, pulling me in for a hug. But I wouldn't trade these years with you and the girls for anything. As the evening deepened, we set up a picnic on the lawn. Rose, with her ever-curious eyes, picked up a daisy and twirled it between her tiny fingers. Daddy, why is the sky orange? She asked, looking up with wonder. Oliver glanced at me, his eyes sparkling with amusement. Well, sweetheart, it's like the sky is wearing its favorite evening dress. Giggled, clearly satisfied with that explanation. As we all sat down to eat, I couldn't help but marvel at how Oliver had grown into an amazing father over the years. Samantha, how was school today? I inquired, passing her a sandwich. It was fun, Mom. We learned about space and planets, she replied between bites. Sounds fascinating. Oliver chimed in. What's your favorite planet? Because of its rings, Samantha said, her eyes wide with excitement. Oliver winked at me. Looks like we've got a future astronaut on our hands. After the picnic, we cleared up and settled by the fire pit. The crackling flames mesmerized us, casting a warm glow on our faces. Remember our first year of marriage, Oliver said, a nostalgic smile on his lips. Could I forget? Our little apartment, late night pizza, and the constant struggle to keep our plants alive. I replied, laughter in my voice. He chuckled. And now we have a beautiful home, two incredible daughters, and a garden that's thriving. I sighed contentedly. Life has a funny way of turning out even better than we imagine. As the night grew darker, we gathered the girls for a round of storytelling. We took turns weaving fantastical tales, each one more imaginative than the last. Samantha and Rose listened with wide-eyed wonder, occasionally adding their own twists to the stories. Daddy, can the dragon have a pet unicorn? Rose asked, her eyes pleading. Of course, sweetheart. In the magical land of our story, anything is possible, Oliver replied his voice brimming with affection. Eventually, the girls began to yawn, their eyelids growing heavy. Time for bed, my little adventurers, I said, ushering them inside. Oliver and I exchanged a knowing look as we tucked them in. Our journey was far from over, but as I gazed at our sleeping daughters, I felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude for the life we had built together. Back outside, under the starlit sky, Oliver pulled me into a gentle embrace. Ten years, Emma. Can you believe it? I leaned into his warmth, feeling the strength of our connection. It's been a beautiful journey, Oliver. And I can't wait to see what the next ten years bring. Hand in hand, we stood there, watching the stars twinkle above us. In that moment, as the days rolled on, my excitement grew as my birthday approached. Oliver had been dropping hints about a surprise he had in store, and I couldn't wait to find out what it was. The anticipation was almost palpable in the air, and I could feel the girls' excitement as they whispered conspiratorially to each other. One evening, just a week before my birthday, 
I walked into the kitchen to find Oliver standing by the counter. He seemed distant, lost in his thoughts. Hey, everything okay? I asked, concern creeping into my voice. He looked up, his expression tense. Yeah, everything's fine, he replied, his words not matching the unease in his eyes. I took a step closer, reaching out to touch his arm. Oliver, talk to me. I can tell something's bothering you. He let out a sigh, his shoulders slumping. It's just, work has been really stressful lately, and I've been feeling overwhelmed. I nodded, understanding the pressures he faced at his job. You know you can always talk to me, right? We're a team. He managed a small smile, but it didn't quite reach his eyes. I know, Emma. I just need a little space to sort things out in my head. I felt a pang of disappointment, but I didn't want to push him if he needed space. All right, just know that I'm here whenever you're ready. The next few days were a whirlwind of emotions as my birthday drew closer. The girls were bubbling with excitement, and I did my best to keep up the festive atmosphere despite my worries about Oliver. I tried to give him the space he asked for, hoping that he would come around soon. On the morning of my birthday, the house was filled with the sweet scent of pancakes and the sound of giggles from Samantha and Rose. As I walked into the kitchen, the girls presented me with a handmade card and a small bouquet of wildflowers they had picked from the garden. Happy birthday, Mom. Samantha exclaimed, her eyes shining with joy. I hugged them tightly, feeling grateful for these precious moments. But as the day wore on and Oliver's absence continued, a heavy cloud of concern settled over me. Late in the afternoon, when the house was quiet and the girls were napping, I found myself sitting by the window, lost in my thoughts. The phone rang, making me jump slightly. I picked it up, hoping to hear Oliver's voice on the other end. Emma, it's Oliver, he said, his voice weary. Oliver, where have you been? I've been worried sick, I exclaimed, a mix of relief and frustration in my tone. I'm so sorry, Emma. I needed some time to clear my head, but I should have at least let you know, he replied, his voice laden with guilt tears welled up in my eyes. Oliver, we're a team. We face things together, remember? There was a pause on the other end, and then he let out a deep sigh. You're right. I messed up, and I'm sorry. We talked for a while, pouring out our feelings and fears. It turned out that his stress had taken a toll on him, and he had let it all build up until he couldn't handle it anymore. We both acknowledged our mistakes and our need to communicate better. As the conversation continued, I felt a weight lifting off my shoulders. It wasn't about the surprise anymore. It was about us, about the love and partnership we had cultivated over the years. By the time we hung up, I knew that we were on the path to healing. A few hours later, Oliver returned home, a weary smile on his face. He held out a wrapped box to me. I know this might not make up for everything, but I hope you'll still accept it. I took the box from him, feeling a rush of gratitude. Thank you, Oliver. Inside the box was a beautiful necklace with a pendant shaped like a heart intertwined with a tree symbolizing our growth and love. As he clasped it around my neck, I felt a renewed sense of connection and commitment. I sat at the outdoor dinner table, the soft glow of fairy lights, casting a warm and cozy ambiance over the courtyard. The scent of grilled vegetables and the sound of laughter filled the air as Samantha rose, and I enjoyed a meal together but a lingering worry still gnawed at me. Oliver had disappeared again. Mom, can we have some more lemonade? 
Samantha asked with a big grin. Of course, sweetie, I replied, getting up to fetch the pitcher. I walked into the house, glancing around for any sign of Oliver. The living room was empty, as was the kitchen. As I headed towards our bedroom, my heart began to race with a mixture of anticipation and anxiety. Maybe he was planning another surprise for me. I gently pushed the bedroom door open, and what I saw shattered the world I knew. There, on the bed, lay Oliver, fast asleep, with my stepmother, Laura, lying beside him. My mind struggled to process the scene. Confusion, anger, and disbelief swirled within me. I stood frozen in the doorway, unable to move or make sense of the reality before me. Laura's presence, the intimacy I witnessed, it was all too much to take in. My hands trembled as I clutched the doorframe for support. Laura stirred, her eyes fluttering open. She noticed me standing there, and her eyes widened in shock. Emma, I this isn't what it looks like. My voice was barely a whisper, a mix of hurt and betrayal. Laura, how could you? Oliver began to wake up, his expression shifting from sleepiness to confusion as he saw me. Emma, what? What's going on? And my voice quivered with a mixture of anger and sorrow. How long has this been happening, Oliver? He sat up, his face turning pale as he realized the depth of the situation. Emma, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Tears welled up in my eyes as a tidal wave of emotions threatened to consume me. Explain? How can you explain this, Oliver? Laura got up from the bed, wrapping a sheet around herself. Emma, please, let us explain. My hands were shaking as I struggled to keep my composure. Explain? You've been sleeping with my stepmother, Oliver. What is there to explain? Oliver stood up his eyes pleading. It's not what you think. Laura and I, we, we developed feelings for each other while you were dealing with your own struggles, and the words hit me like a punch to the gut. While I had been busy supporting our family, Oliver had turned to my stepmother for comfort. The pain was overwhelming. Samantha's voice echoed from outside the bedroom door. Mom, are you okay? I wiped away a tear, forcing myself to hold it together for my daughters. I'm coming, sweetheart. As I turned to leave the room, my gaze met Oliver's one last time. In that moment, the years of love, laughter, and memories seemed like distant echoes. I stepped out into the courtyard, trying to put on a brave face for Samantha and Rose, but as I looked at them, their innocent faces illuminated by the soft light, I knew that the life I had known had forever changed. My heart ached as I realized that the road ahead would be filled with challenges and difficult decisions for the sake of the family that still remained.